Somebody said to me on Facebook, why don't you come and do this race in Spain? And I was like, what is it? 50K uphill. And I was like, what the f are you talking about? 50K uphill. It's just incomprehensible at the time. So I thought, if people can do it, I'll take a shot, yeah? I think I had eight weeks to train. I was indoor in a treadmill after hours, running at 6% gradient for two, three hours. I got to Spain, it was like 40 degrees Celsius in August. I just wanted to finish it before the cutoff, which was eight hours. And I did it, and it was the first time it, sport has ever made me emotional. I stood at the top of this mountain in the south of Spain in Granada. I remember looking at the podium and seeing these guys, they were just animals. Bodybuilder legs with cyclists, top upper bodies, completely fit for purpose. Looking at them, I can see the level of dedication, what it takes. And that's essentially what the sport is of ultra running. It's drive, dedication, and determination. You don't need talent. You've got to just have persistence. If there is any shortcut in running, it would be hill training. It's like your strength training together with your tasting blood on sessions. That's where, for me, it really counts. Learn to enjoy those, because those are the hardest sessions. Everything else feels easy. You get your speed from hill running, and just enjoy being out there. Make sure it's a fun process. We could do togas. <laughs> Running's not complicated, so in a week, you really need to be training hard twice a week. A long run and then an interval session. Your endurance comes from your long run, which is usually the weekends, because that's when mo most people have got most time, and your overall total volume. If you're working in kilometers, the magic number is 100 kilometers. If you're working in miles, if you're American or Brit, you're working 100 miles a week is the magic number. It's just a joke, because your job as a runner is to get good as good as you can to be as fast as you can on one day to run one race. You're not training for the Tour de France. You need to be fast for one day. And that comes from your long run and your, kind of your lactate threshold training. Cross training for me has been amazing over the years. I've done a lot of cycling. Let's say you're doing 10 hours of running in a week and then you add on to that 10 hours of cycling. That's great for your heart and lungs and your blood. And it's only a good thing. It's just like being a kid on a bike for four, five, six hours and racing up and down mountains all over the world. It's been perfect. There is a thing where you look at your stride length and there's people who think your stride length reduces if you're cycling a lot. For me, it's always depended on the cadence. Now you've got watches and heart rate monitors that tell you everything you could possibly need to know. So you can see your stride length. And for me, it's always come from having powerful glutes and hamstrings. If you keep your cadence high on the bike, you're working the lungs and the heart and the blood more. That's great for your overall training. I guess it's just a matter of time for people to go out and get the same amount of fitness that you need running versus cycling, it's going to be more efficient to run. But once you get to a point where you're doing 10, 12, 15 hours a week, there's not much more running you can do. It's very difficult to compete and win against people who are having fun. So if you can enjoy those long days out there in for hours and hours and hours, very difficult to compete against you. So if you love what you do, you're unstoppable. So learning how to make that fun for you. If it's not fun for you, go and do something else, because life's really short. Running's not just running. You need your strength. You need to be agile, and so your mobility really helps. Looking after yourself diet-wise, so putting the right foods in there, and also sleep is the fun foundation of everything. Good sleep and really taking care of your sleep. Those people who say, oh, I can survive on five hours, they're in the... 0.1%. I love the night, so I often stay up late and then I'll wake up late. I'll make sure I'll guard my eight hours sleep and then wake up so that it's already hot and then train in the heat. But whenever I've been my fittest, it's because I've done a lot of heat training. The training, the heat, it's, it's like you've got the training and also your blood is adapting to, to cool yourself down and to efficiently work under stress, under the heat. When you race at 12 degrees, 15 degrees Celsius, it feels easy. For me, it's better than altitude training. 
And that's why I've moved around so much. I basically chase the summer around, kind of stay away from the winter, and that's really wor worked well for me. And then I train again in the afternoon. That's often a, a weight session or a bike session. They make sure it's fun. Whilst I've been a professional runner, I've never once felt like I'm working. Never. It's always been like, today's gonna be a great day.